Hey everybody, my name is Daniel, and today I'll be reviewing the bag chip Rex that I found on Thingiverse. Kind of a cool design. Basically has a moving kind of tail and mouth assembly that allow you to grip the uh, chip bag and kind of creates a little unique chip clip you can use. They have several sizes. I'm going to print the smaller one today as kind of a first step and see how it prints out. Now I read through the thing details here and it mentions that there's three different sizes. They include an F3D file if you want to learn how to make modifications to it. They do recommend supports, but they're saying supports touching the build plate only. So we'll try their, their method first and see how it comes out and then we can make adjustments if needed. I'll be printing with flash print today. I'm using version 5.21. Let's get started. Okay, so you can see here I have the model loaded up in flash print. And you can see from this model here, there's several spots that are just overhanging parts. Um, you can see there. So we'll need to add some supports before getting this ready for print. In flash print, there's, a, there's an option here for supports. Now they have different kinds. They've got the tree-like supports and got the, the pillar supports. I haven't had great luck with the tree-like supports yet. Um, I'm sure it'll work in some models, but for some reason I just had a bad issue with it. So I'm going to stick with the pillar supports for now. I'm going to go ahead and check touch platform only. That way it only generates uh, support on the actual touch of the platform. And we'll try auto supports here. So it'll go ahead and generate those supports. And you can see that there's still some areas that are overhanging, so I'll we'll have to kind of see how that handles it on the printer. But I'm taking the creator's device and I'm not going to build supports anywhere but touching the build plate. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back here and we'll do the slicing now. So, mine's set up uh, for Flash Forge PLA. I'm actually using Overture PLA that I got off Amazon. Um, I found that uh, 210 prints very well. And I usually use a 45 degree bed temperature here. Uh, in general, we're going to print a 0.1 layer height. These are all kind of the standard settings. I haven't changed any of these here. Uh, same with these. 15% infill is fine. Uh, and I usually do four top layers and three bottom layers typically. These are the support settings. Something I did tweak is the space to model and then on the Z axis. Um, I increased this a bit so that it'd be a little bit easier to break those supports off. Um, Usually I find this is a typically a good space, it allows me to get the model to you know, still support or the support still the model, support the model, but uh, not create issues when it comes to um, taking them off basically. Next thing will be the raft. Now for this model here I'm thinking I'm going to turn the raft off. I want to just have it be a simple model, I don't need to have rafts as well. We can try it with a raft if there's problems later on, but I tend to like the bottom surface a little better when we don't do a raft. And everything else I have is pretty much default. Nothing has been changed in these settings. I do bump up my extrusion ratio to 100%. For some reason, Flash Forge goes for 96% by default. But I find that some of the layers, especially the first layer, are usually under extruded. So by going by 100, it seems to fix that issue. And I put that back. That should be at 0 0.40. That was for another print I was doing earlier. So everything else is pretty much locked in here. Uh, I do usually use the Z-Hop and I use Auto Match. I found it to be the best um, setting for what I most of what I do. Basically this Z-Hop mode, all it does is just simply make sure it lifts up when it's going over certain parts to avoid dragging the nozzle through your print and creating extra lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice this now and look at the slice preview. So this kind of shows you a preview of what it'll actually look like when it slices. You can see the supports underneath there. You can even see there's a bit of a gap here. Uh, and that's to like, easily be removed. We'll have to kind of play with, like I said, and see how that works here. Um, but it's kind of cool you can kind of step through each section of the build and see exactly how it's going to be built. And this kind of allows you to see if there's going to be any problems, anything issues you might want to address before you print it. Uh, anything that looks strange, doesn't look quite right. So this is estimating it'll take about 1.45 meters of plastic and about an hour to print it. So I'm going to go ahead and locally save this to my drive here. And we'll go ahead and get this loaded in the printer.
Okay, so I've got the prints here, got the small one and the big one that I did as well. Um, both these work pretty great. Um, on the small one, I noticed there's some lines that were a little uneven on the tail end here. It was 0.35 on this one for supports, and it was just too much, didn't quite grab it. So on the bigger one, I actually let the supports on so I can show you kind of how it looks. You can see those supports there on the end. Um, this should be a lot cleaner. I'm a lot closer on this one here. So let's go ahead and take this off. I'm gonna just kind of pull this off here. There's a little bit of a layer that kind of comes between, you kind of just kind of separate and it comes off real nice. And so far, really, the, the tails are going a lot better on this model than the small one. Um, you know, printing it out further away, the supports from the actual device or what you're printing will actually give you a better, um, I guess, removability for the actual supports. But when it comes to the look, it's definitely better to have them closer. The support is better, obviously. So this one looks great. There's a little support on the other end here. When I did the build for this, I used um, Generate Auto Supports, and I used it for anything touching a build plate. So it generated an additional one right here as well, which I'll go ahead and cut off now. And then let's see if we can open the jaws. So there you go. Opens up the jaws, no problem. And uh, I tried this on a bag of chips. It works great, actually. It really does keep it. There's a decent amount of spring, as you can see. And the thing about a chip bag is not going to be completely flat. So putting this on it would really give it some decent grip. I really like the big one, actually. Um, really cool. Definitely recommend trying this print out for sure. Um, if you do print it, it's best to generate some supports along the tail end here. Probably could have left this one out, honestly. I really didn't need that. You can see this one printed just fine without it. Um, so that probably wasn't needed, that extra piece there, but it really didn't hurt anything either. Uh, didn't add too much to the build. So definitely worth a shot. I'll include a link uh, below in the video to the Thingiverse file if you want to print it for yourself. And thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.